Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hanks, and in this video, we are going to continue our discussion of C++11 features that you may have forgotten about or maybe never learned about. And in this video, we're going to talk about null pointer. Okay, so N-U-L-L-P-T-R. This was introduced as a replacement for the null macro or for using zero for initializing pointers or for working with pointers. It's a null that is specific to pointers and it gives you some um, compile time checking to help make your code a little bit safer. So that way, when you're using this, uh, you can avoid some potential unattended bugs, I guess you could say. Okay, so let's go ahead and take okay, a look so at it. If you take a look at the null value, right? so let's say int x equals null, for example, right? You can see that it's not part of C++. It's not. It's not built in, right? So to gain access to it, you would need to pound include IO stream. Okay. Now take a look at this. Null can be assigned to an integer variable x, which may or may not make sense. Normally, or maybe previously, you're more used to using it with a pointer. Okay. Fine. That works. But remember, null is just, it's just a replacement for zero, right? Early on, we didn't have null. And so if you wanted to set a pointer to point to nothing, you'd use zero because zero is not a valid memory address. Well, what's better is using null because it's a little bit more descriptive, okay? But null is still just zero, okay? You could, um, let's go ahead and put our using namespace in here. You could even send null to C out. Okay, so you can see there's zero. It's just, it's just, it's a replacement for zero. Okay. But you can do some weird things with it. You can do something like this. You can say null plus one, right? And then you could apply that or, or assign that to a variable, right? And then compile that and run it. Okay. And, uh, okay, does that make much sense? What's it mean to assign null to one, okay? Um, now, along came null PTR, which was a step forward in the evolution, right, of, of the use of null, right? So, for one thing, let's go ahead and delete all this. For one thing, null pointer is built in, okay? So, you can do something like this, create a pointer, initialize it to null ptr okay so that's one improvement right another improvement is the fact that you can't assign it to just a regular old integer variable okay it's not an integer it's its own special dedicated uh, thing right and if you try to do that then you get an error if you try to you know send it to c out you get an error but you can assign it to a pointer, right? It's specifically designed for working with pointers. So you could even, you know, test the pointer. Oops, P. Uh, oops. No pointer. You could even test it. Okay. And um, it's going to work you know, just fine. Okay. Uh, oops, this is here. Okay, so it can be a replacement, or it's designed to be a replacement for null. Okay, so you can see, yeah, it works just fine. Um, now, you can assign it not just to um, integer pointers, but I mean, you could use it for any type of pointer. For characters, for example, oops, and you're not going to get any of those weird kind of situations that could crop up with it. For example, you know you can't do any kind of addition with it, you know, or any kind of arithmetic operations with it, like we could with null. And so you get compile time checking when using it. It gives you an extra level of safety. Now, here's another example of where it might be useful. You see this example on the internet when you, when you look up null pointer a lot, is that you might have, you know, say a function that accepts an integer, right? And then maybe you have another function 
that accepts a pointer. Okay. Now, if you were to call, let's call that bar just for so it's easier to refer to. Now, if you were to call fun, you could pass it zero. Um, you could pass it null, right? Um, but remember, no, you, you might have learned to use that with pointers. Well, you can pass that as an argument to this function that um, only accepts integers. Uh, oops, maybe that's what you intended to do, maybe not. But if we tried to pass null pointer to fun, then the compiler is going to catch that. Right? So you can see uh, in the output, you know, error. No, it's compatible with type or with parameter of type int. So you get a little extra safety there. Okay. But if you were to pass it to bar, well then, you know, bar is a function that accepts a pointer as an argument. So you could use zero, you could use null, or you could use null pointer. Now, best practice is to use null pointer with pointers. So that way you can have that um, compile time checking that happens, okay? Um, you know, maybe head off some potentially bad, you know, bugs that could crop up, okay? So null pointer is definitely the, the superior choice when we're with pointers. I mean, it's right in there in the name, null PTR. Now, another kind of interesting thing about uh, null PTR is that it's defined in STD namespace, okay? So what that means is you don't have to have, you don't have to include um, the IO stream, okay? You don't even, it's not even, you don't even need to use naming, using namespace STD because it's defined, it's built in, okay? But if you do include the namespace, okay? In that namespace, there is a null pointer type that's defined, which you can then um, create variables of. Okay, so let's say A. Okay, and then from there, you can assign to that null pointer. Okay, and then you could even pass that as an argument to bar, or you could test, uh, you could test it. Okay, so we'll see how high. Oops. Which is really kind of interesting. Right? I mean, it's, it's always kind of fun just to see the weird things that you can do with the language, with features in the language. Let's put um, iostream back in there. Okay. So you see how we can test it, and then we created a variable of type null pointer type, and uh, it runs right because when we say if a, a is null, right? It's it's false. So that is going to go ahead and evaluate the false. So we skip this, the high C out and then we kick down to the um, by C out. Let's look at one more use of null pointer here where it helps to protect you and keep you safe. So let's say that we did overload uh, fun, okay? And um, we'll make a pointer version of it, okay? So now uh, if you were to call fun and pass it null, you might be thinking, well, I, I'm meaning to invoke the pointer version, right? Because normally you think about null in terms of pointers, okay? But which one is it actually invoking, right? So let's, let's check it out, right? So we'll do the C out in X there, and then we'll do C out in star X, right? And then we'll see which one it actually uh, is going to invoke which overloader or which version of fun. Okay. And then you can see that it invoked the integer parameter version, which you might not have wanted, right? I mean, it's easy to see that that's what was going to happen. Uh, maybe it's a little bit easier to see that's what was going to happen if you actually passed zero as an argument, right? But remember, null is just a stand in for zero. But if we use null pointer now, then you're going to see that you get the pointer version. Okay. So that's everything that I have for you in this video. If you're a student of mine, please feel free to stop by my office hours, shoot me an email. 
Um, if you thought the video was good, please consider giving a thumbs up. If that video sucked, you got a thumbs down as well. And please consider supporting the channel in multiple ways. We've got, uh, you can subscribe. We've got memberships that you can uh, use. You can join as a member for additional perks. Um, all kinds of different ways you can support the channel. Leave comments and all that. Really appreciate it. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.